Okay, welcome from the IBA Tampa Bay, Florida chapter study group. This is April 27th of 2023. This is our 75th class. Today we have a special guest speaker, Mike Russell. He's going to be talking about artificial intelligence and the business analyst. Our goal here, our mission here is to bridge the gap between industry leaders and business analysts by building partnerships with professionals, educators, and employers so that we may empower, instruct, and engage the BA community. You have a variety of ways you can reach us. Right now is our Thursday night study group between 7 and 8 p.m. Eastern. You can access past meeting recordings at the link that Cliff will be dropping into the chat. We also have a IBA website, meetups, Zoom, Facebook, and LinkedIn groups if you would like to reach us at any of those methods, ways. Um, what would you want to reach us for? You would want to reach us to ask us for information, get your attendance in these classes, uh, ask us for mentorship, ask us for connection on uh, networking so you can be introduced to someone in an organization that we are linked to on LinkedIn. Uh, we have a couple of thousand connections and we are happy to make introductions. Uh, you would ask us for resume reviews or uh, just coaching on interviews, whatever you need, we're here to help you. Uh, let's see, we have been going through the BABOC and uh, taking study test questions. Uh, these are practice test questions that have been provided to us by Watermark Learning. Watermark Learning not only has business analysis topics, but they have a couple of others. They've given us a discount code, it's Tampa with a space 21, which is 20% off of any of their products. We are a volunteer-led organization. Our board is led by Cliff. He is our president. Lori, Caitlin, and Priscilla are our board members. My name is Thea Soren. I'm the vice president of career and professional development here. Uh, reach out to me if you have any questions. LinkedIn is the best way to reach me. We do need additional board members. Uh, if you're interested in either using a skill that you already have or developing a skill that you have either learned and not used in a while or need to learn, reach out to us. Uh, we're not asking for 100 hours. If you have five hours, we could use you. Uh, one of the things we are looking for is a CFO of our board uh, so that we can continue our incorporation process. If you're interested, please reach out. Uh, study group advisors, you will see Bob Churchill up here in the corner. He has been our steady uh, mentor for quite a while. He has passed his CVAP certification has a bunch of other letters after his name, also has a fantastic website full of information about not just business analysis, mechanical engineering, strategy, uh, all kinds of really important things that a business analyst needs to be aware of and familiar with. You can reach Bob here at this address. Uh, Yulia is normally here as our second and our backup CBAP. Yulia has passed her CBAP after being a student here in our study group for quite a while. She is in her final weeks of her master's degree uh, preparations. She'll be graduating in just a few weeks. So we're excited about that. We're missing her and we're looking forward to her coming back. Other people that have been students here is Tish, Bonnie, and Frank. I talked about Frank last week. And uh, we also have uh, Renu has passed her CBAP. So people are passing their CBAPs or ECBAs or other certifications after being students here with us and returning to us and saying that we were beneficial to them. If we've been beneficial to you, whether you're attending this live or as a recording, reach out and let us know. It's, it's encouraging to us. We've been doing this for a long time. As I said, this is our 75th study group. And uh, before, there, before that, there were lunch and learns and all kinds of other stuff. But you know, we're doing this, we're not charging anything. We're doing it just to help people. We want to know that it's actually working. Uh, let me turn it over to Bob Churchill. Bob is going to talk about changes in the, in the testing uh, process for the ECBA for the IIBA. Yeah, just uh, really briefly, um, the IIBA in its infinite wisdom has decided to make the process of sitting for the ECBA exam way simpler. So instead of training and building up hours and doing all kinds of 
um, preparation, how you just study, pay, sit for the exam, off you go. If you pass your uh, one law, you're in ECBA. So that took effect the after day. I uh, encourage you, if you're interested, to pursue that and get on the ladder. And uh, that's about it. Check okay. the IIBA website for detail. Okay. And there was someone that had a, um, thank you for that, Bob. There was someone that had a, uh, something that they wanted to present as far as a study aid. Uh, Ashish, are you here? Yes, dear. Okay. Would you like to take the screen and show us what you found? I uh, sure. Just like that. Thank you. I apologize. I had told Ashish that he could do this at the end. So I, I'm kind of springing this on him, and that's not fair. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Uh, so I found this uh, very interesting article from modernanalyst.com. I've subscribed to, to their newsletter and articles, and um, they keep sending emails with these brilliant articles every now and then. So I I saw this um, article wherein it says how to remember 50 BABOK techniques. Um, and I thought that it, it is interesting and I would share it with the group as well. So they have, and I would be sending the link to this article so that everyone can go through it uh, um, in a detailed manner. But they have kind of broken down the techniques into various phases, like what techniques you can use it in the planning phase, what all techniques can be grouped into the elicitation phase, uh, what all techniques you can use in the life cycle management, um, the requirement life cycle management. And then you have the solution evaluation um, group over here, followed by requirement analysis and design and strategy analysis. So, and then it goes on explaining like how uh, you can group them so it is easier for you to remember and understand them. Um, so so I, I will, not go through the entire article, but I just wanted to quickly show the group that this could be a very interesting article um, if you are preparing for the um, certification and if you want to have an easy way of remembering the 50 techniques that we are currently going through. Very nice. Thank you, Ashish. If you'll drop that into the chat, we can only use it. Absolutely. I would be doing that. If I may comment, uh... Adaptive US is the company I studied with to get my hours uh, to sit for my CBAM. They generate a lot of great materials. Their customer service is second to none. They have preparation for all the search that the IIBA does. I highly recommend them. Right. Very good. Okay. So with that, let me turn the, this over to Mike. Uh, let me share my screen real quick, just one more time. If I can get it to work. Here we go. So this is Mike's uh, LinkedIn profile. I first found Mike because I was fascinated by his tagline. This tells you the power of the tagline. His tagline is, I help owners and CEOs outperform 85% of the companies in their industry without sacrificing their values. That in itself pulled me in because values are really important to me. And then as I read through his bio and his activity, I found out that he was somebody we needed to talk to. So I gave him a call and he was kind enough to come and talk to us. He's going to be talking about artificial intelligence and what the business analyst needs to know. So, Mike, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and let you have it. Okay. Well, thanks for having me. Um, this, uh, how long do you have? You, you go to about 45 after, 50 after, somewhere out in there. I just want to make sure that we don't overrun the end. We we try to end at seven o'clock, and we'll, if you can give us a time for a few uh, questions at the end, that'd be probably be best. 
Well, what we're going to do here actually is uh, do a few brief exercises at the beginning just to kind of get the, the neurons running in a certain way and then have a, a roundtable discussion. And I do want to focus, you know, there's all kinds of stuff AI, right? We could be here all night just even categorizing applications and everything else, but we're going to talk about specifically from a business analysis point of view and a business analyst job standpoint. So before we start, though, um, uh, one thing I'll say is, Ashish, that was a really nice graphic. You know, mind maps from a learning and training perspective are really good for remembering information because it gives you some kind of structure in your head. And that's one thing I would recommend as you're learning, you know, the business analyst body of knowledge is that any kind of details you can make subordinate maps too and it really helps you if you build the maps as well you know to to I, just kind of get that firm in your mind i've used it a number of times in fact not just for learning the body of knowledge but also implementing it right that's a good handy reference of have i forgotten anything <laughs> when i'm setting this project up Okay, so we're going to use the chat a little bit because that also then helps uh, not only for networking, but for at the end, you can save the chat and get any information that anyone has shared. So right now, what I'd like each of you to do, uh, just take a minute or so and put in the chat, what are the top questions in your mind around AI and BAs? And then secondly, a more focused question, have you used the GPT AI tool, chat GPT? So two questions. Top questions, issues on your mind, and have you used chat GPT before? Just stick it in the chat. Okay, great questions. Um, you know, if you want to add more, go ahead and put in. The next thing I'm going to ask you to put in is just very brief summary, all right? If we look at the body of knowledge, like she put up the mind map, right? There's lots of stuff in there. But if you were to distill the primary functions of a business analyst into, say, top two, three, five at most, what would those be and what value does a business analyst provide to the organization? Or if you just want to concentrate on that last question, that's fine. What's the value a business analyst provides to the organization? And then what are the, some of the key functions that a business analyst does? So in one sense, we are giving you a little bit of uh, Test prep here. <laughs> it covers some of the main things.
I love how eloquent you are, Bob. Yeah, I'm, I'm just like, wow. <laughs> He's already got this documented somewhere. <laughs> I bet you he does. Only say the same thing every stinking week. <laughs> no, you don't. Yeah, I do. In different ways. Okay, right. So two questions we're working on in the chat. What value does a business analyst provide top level and what are some of the key functions in doing that? Do the value question for sure. And if you want, add in the other functions because that's what we're going to talk about here regarding AI. Let's see here. And as you're reading, you know, if you see something from other people that you like, or you see lots of thumbs ups and hearts on things, you know, do that. Or if it sparks another idea, go ahead and do it. We'll take another half a minute here or so. Okay, if you can, as, as you have ideas, keep adding them in. But let's, uh, hang on a second. Now I'm going to ask you, and this is a discussion. I mean, normally if we had a lot of people, we'd do breakout rooms. I don't think, we, I mean, we could do a couple of breakouts, but let's just do it in the group here tonight, particularly from a recording perspective so others can hear it later. So if you to look at the list that that you've put, many of you put in the chat, or what you're thinking about, how many of the lists involve things like this? So here's a list of about nine things as a starting point. So do these things encompass most of what you put in the chat? Some of it? What do you think? Let's hear some discussion. That looks like a job description of a business analyst. And uh, one thing I would say about many people's conception of ABA is that they view it as being too limited, only involved with the uh, uh, requirements and talking between uh, customers and uh, technical teams and their capabilities or and should be regarded as being much wider. Okay, Bob, you hit on one of my rant areas that I normally do when I talk about business analysis and business analysts is that, you know, the field in a lot of ways has allowed itself to be taken on this tack where BAs get translated as requirements writers or translators, and that's it, right? When it really should be, <laughs> to be able to get to that point is the full spectrum of stuff, but I won't go over there, but yeah, I totally agree with you. That's been, I've been on that for I don't know how long. Any other comments about this list or, you know, compared to things you were thinking of or things that are in the chat? Whole life cycle. Yep. Estimation. Okay. So estimation. Is that yeah? Um I didn't see it on the list, but I it's definitely something I, I'm very interested in in producing good estimates, um in having estimate models and um, function point estimation, that sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, depending on the docu documentation available, that could come under research. It could come under elicitation. I mean, it could come in a number of ways, right? So estimation is something that's not explicitly on here. Any other comments before we go to the next item? So uh, now here's an interesting question for you. Where did I get this list? Any guesses? 
did you use AI and have it scan the Babok? <laughs> I asked ChatGPT what business analysis functions it could do. So ChatGPT can do these things? Yes. The question is how well. Ah, all right. So we'll get to the how well in a minute, right? So how well and what do these exactly mean? Right? Because some of these, if you just take the pure mechanical aspects of it, well, then certainly AI, you know, like chat GPT can do it. One of the things that has happened, you know, in the background at the moment, well, I will get to that in a minute. I'll talk about marketing, you know, content generation and other stuff. But <clears throat> fundamentally, the new, the newest engines, uh, the linear language engines that uh, or the learning language engines that have come out um, they have been scanning the internet for some time and picking up lots of information and they've been trained and can and can do a lot of things based on what knowledge you're asking it to do these things on but these are the primary functions in a sense of what the capabilities are now. I mean, we'll we'll come back to this in a minute. So then that raises the question, you know, well, how how does it do it? Well, Chat GPT works on prompts, meaning questions that you ask it or things that you ask it to do. And so here's a cheat sheet. And if you look on LinkedIn and or somewhere and search for Chat GPT prompt you know, prompts or, you know, chat GPT prompts or business analysts even, you know, I just put this up here to give you an idea about, well, how can I use it, right? And look at the define the chat GPT roles, you know? What that means is, is when I give you this information or when I'm asking you this question, I want you to act as, in other words, if I give you this information, I want you to act as a business analyst and take this information and do X with it or whatever. You know, it can explain things. Chain prompting is where you put things together like logic. And here's some example prompts, marketers, designers, developers, like I said, pretty much every field, people are looking at it and experimenting with it and finding things to do. Um, and somebody put in the questions, right? Can I have it develop tests? Yes, you can have it develop tests, if you have the requirements that you can provide it to build the test from. So that gives you an idea. Now, that brings up the question that everybody asks, can human beings compete with AI? And so my um, proposition to you is that's the wrong question. <laughs> Because in areas where AI has been trained or is capable of doing the work, you can almost never compete with it. The real questions are, you know, how can it complement us? Because one of the key things, I think Ashish put it in there, is how can AI help me in my daily job, right? Um, how can it make me more effective? You know, how can I use it as a tool? What are the areas that humans excel in where AI does not? In other words, go beyond just competing with AI. That's your aim. You know, how can you leverage your human to advantage? Because one of the questions I think Theo put this in is there are limits to what AI can do. Despite all the, you know, movies in the past and everything else, we don't have AI that is truly sentient yet. It's still a machine. There are still limits to it, um, especially around you know feelings, intuition, other stuff it can't do. It can do a huge amount in just the last year or two, far more effectively than it could in the past, all those functions we just talked about. But what does it mean to be, you know, what is a human versus a machine and what are the capabilities that human has? So that's the, the question. And from a job perspective, it's not so much are you competing against AI, or how do you compete against people who are figuring out how to leverage the current capabilities in their job? So those are the questions, you know, to think, it's not a tonight kind of thing, but I want you to be thinking about because that's the keys 
to making sure that you're not replaced by someone else who's leveraging it or somebody just says, well, you're not providing me any value, right? So you go back to the value question. When you think about what's the value I provide in whatever role, but especially in a business analyst role, the more that you can talk about that value in human terms or human functions that people know or can't be replicated by AI, the better off you are. Now, a couple of other things to think about before we go into questions. So based on that proposition I just said of, you know, think about how do I leverage it and what work I'm doing is that use it to think, uh, figure out how to think better. Some of what's happening here, and I didn't put the entire extract here from Perry Marshall, who was a very influential marketer. He's saying that basically a lot of marketing based on what AI can do is dumbing down. And people are accepting AI to do its to do their jobs at a lower level so they don't have to think. If you go the other direction and figure out how to think better, and in that thing, how to think better, how to leverage AI and even in helping you to think better, then that puts you in a leadership position and radically reduces your chances of being let go or the theist point had terminated, <laughs> you know. All right, so here's my point that I want to leave you with, if nothing else tonight, right? AI, GIGO still applies, garbage in, garbage out, right? Despite the fact that, you know, when I said earlier that the current models, chat GPT and everything else have been devouring everything on the internet, just like search engines, so that tells you that a lot of what they come up with may not be right or may be suspect because not everything out on the internet is true, much contrary to what some people want to think, right? So analysis, discernment, and thinking will be even more important. And so my proposition to you that I want you to think about is that real BAs to what, you know, uh, Bob was mentioning earlier, will be even more important uh, to companies in the future because they will be the ones, because the job is analysis, the job is thinking, right? In theory, you've been taught how to do this better than anybody else, and you can help lead the company forward in figuring out how to leverage this and what it means to get a competitive advantage from AI. Okay, so that's the main thing that I want you to think about based on those other things that we went through, right? Move away from descriptions of what you do that are mechanical or sound mechanical in, in basis like translation or copying or summarizing or whatever that the machine can do and focus on what are the key human elements here that, uh, you know, that are really crucial to business analysis that sets the full set of business analysis apart from machines. Okay, so I'll stop there for a moment and then we can, what kind of questions, I mean, we can go into other stuff, but you know, what, what other things you wanna talk about at this point, given that setup? Well, I, I think you honestly hit on one big one there that we've found. Uh, I, I work at Microsoft with, and we have a ch big chat GPT <laughs> uh, environment now. And yeah, you've made a huge investment in AI. Yes, we have. And in open AI in particular, right, to license that. Yeah. My, my biggest issue is, is understanding, like you said, where it's getting its data from. Um, we just for instance for one uh, we did a project for iron man um and the iron man races and everything else this was a couple of years ago when ai was just first starting out but uh they wanted to be able to keep track of every one of their racers runners whatever and the equipment that they use so they always right. took pictures of everyone 
um, their bikes, their tags and everything else. And then what they would do is they would get interns to go through the pictures and register everything manually from the pictures. And we spent probably a year at least of bringing in pictures and helping and teaching the AI how to translate certain bikes, types, numbers, and everything else. And, and we got it to where they could take a picture and register that person, um, what bike they were using, what spokes, what tires, what, you know, everything down to their shoes and everything else. Um, but you have to teach it. And you, you know, and, and the big examples I think that you see of garbage in, garbage out with AI is, is ones that are turned to the internet, like you said, just openly. Because there's a lot of garbage out there. If yeah, you control so if what I it ask, has, yeah. Go ahead. I was just going to yeah. say, I, I second what you say. And that's why the discernment word I put in there, not just the analysis and thinking part, because you know, if you ask a, any kind of subject that's not very narrowly constricted to, G, to chat GPT or any of the other engines, it can't give you the source. Because if you ask a general question and ask for the source, what it'll come back with is, well, here, here are some example references that I pulled information like these, right, from. But it's mm -hmm. not going to give you the exact source like if you did or well, maybe not everybody was, but you know, if you were in college or, or a school, other school, and they asked you to do a paper and you had to put all the references in and footnotes and everything like that, it's not going to do that. So, um, by the way, let me just see. I'll, 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 I'll give you one more example here. I'll just show you the output since I mentioned it uh, earlier. <clears throat> So here's the actual, um, it can save the chats too. So you can see a number of queries I did on the background. How can GPT-4, which is the current engine, be used in business analysis, right? So here's all the stuff, potential applications. Now, the way to drill down into this is to ask further questions, which I didn't do on each one of these. You know, how can it be used? So let's see. So, you know, let me see if it remembers. Oops. Well, I'll pick one of these. Which one do you want me to ask it about, you know, more detail about? Number six. Number six. Okay. All right. So that, yeah, that would be a good one. Um, I'm going to make a general one here. Now, like I said, you can find all kinds of guides. It's kind of like early days if, if you've ever used SQL or any kind of query language, right? There's ways of there's ways of using it well, even or you know, Excel, you know, formulas or anything else. Well, it's the same thing with chat BT, GPT. All those prompt guides out there are ways of figuring out how to leverage it, you know, in the best way. All right, what is more information about how chat BT, GPT 4 can be used for process up? This is the real tool, by the way. This is <laughs> this is real time. What if you could come up with thousands? Say that again. Yeah, it might be answering this question for the next hour. <laughs> well, I can stop it in a moment. I'm just, I used to yeah. give it up to like 10 because a lot of times it'll stop around eight or 10. Yeah, see, right? It'll, it'll give you a, an initial list. Now, there's always now they're started to include a disclaimer at the end. You didn't see this originally. It's this part right here about well, it can provide value. You know, it's crucial to value SMEs and stakeholders and decision making process, context and validation, and everything else. Right? 
The important thing about if you want something specific, as long as it's not confidential or secret or, you know, some you never put anything in a chat GPT, you don't want somebody else to find out because you're teaching it, by the way, with stuff that you put in it. But let's say that you had something that you weren't too concerned about, a business process, some kind of documentation. You could put it in here, which is very specific information, and ask it questions about that. So, for instance, if you want an article to give another explanation, if you want an executive summary for an article, which I used to slave hours on that, you know, on, you could feed the article in here or a short part of a book or something and say, give me a summary of it. And it's very good at that, right? Because it's now just your specific part. And it's a, but like anything else, it's like Wikipedia. That's one of the best um, analogies I've heard to this is Wikipedia can, is a useful start a lot of times, but you have to be suspect and questioning about the sources and how it derived the answers based on the sources, right? So anyway, so that's an actual demonstration of what you can get out of here. Anybody want to ask another question before we you know, put in? Just could be on anything, just to see how it works. We have a question in the chat. What do you think about the new Snapchat AI that's come out with and what possible business analysis purpose could it serve? I don't know if, if there's info in here on this because most of the information in chat GPT is up through 2021. They're doing more training, so it may not have anything current, but we'll see. Snap GPT, right? Uh, it's Snapchat AI. I don't know oh, what Snapchat it's called. Snapchat AI, right. Sorry. I have a one cell destructive memory. As soon as something else comes in, it goes. Most of us share that element. Yeah, it may, it, you know, what happens a lot of times is it'll come back. Oh, well, it's actually telling us. Hmm. Interesting. I wonder if it's limited to just Snapchat. I don't know. Well, we'll ask that question when it's done. You tell me what question you want to ask. Okay. All right. What do you want to ask? Is Snapchat AI's analysis limited only Snapchat um, material? What do you mean by that? Does it go outside of Snapchat to do research or is it only within Snapchat? Yeah, I think it kind of said that at the beginning. Did it? Did I just uh, miss the stuff it started spewing out? Yeah. Well, we'll ask it anyway. <clears throat> confirm. Yeah, there you go. First sentence. Platform. Yeah. Wow. So, I mean, I uh, to give you another example, if somebody brought up, and this is a very corner case, I mean, you know, was talking about um, Clausewitz's theory of war and how it applied to agile methods on LinkedIn. Now, I, I thought they were taking a wrong position, but I thought, well, what the heck, I'll just try it on chat GPT, right? Right. So, you know, um, had to do with the concept of war, right? So these were the two things that, that somebody mentioned, you know, and I, because they were saying, well, Clausewitz's theory of war, you know, contributed to World War One and attrition warfare. Do we want that same thing happening in product and software development with agile methods? And I'm like, what? What? <laughs> and, and also <laughs> the concept of total war, which means against both, you know, military and civilian targets. And I. So I asked the questions in here, and I was surprised that in this case, it actually came up with the background 
that I was used to from having, because I had studied Clausewitz in depth before, we don't need to go in wide, but you know, for, and the background of that, those thinkers, especially during the 18th century, but you know, it can vary. Sometimes it doesn't, you know? Okay. So, all right, another example now. What uh, that was just a little fun example there. So, what do we want to talk about now? Anything else you want to chew on? I've given you the high points of what I think about it. One of the challenges we have at work right now is identifying the links between different companies and that we service. For instance, if we service um, Kellogg's. We want to know all the other Kellogg's companies and subsidiaries that they have. Can AI help us with that? Because right well, now, we so prepared. give give me a question. Why? So that's this is part of the art of it, right? And you can re actually ask it questions on helping you with props. But let's let's try that again, right? So let's just take another um, another example here. Okay, so. Ask it. Just, just tell me what to type in. Um, well, you can say what companies does Kellogg's own, or Colgate, or uh -huh. see, right? Is this, see, it's funny you mention that because I, when I was at Nielsen, one of my projects many years ago was trying to find out what companies owned what stations. Yeah, because it's a huge issue with with like. The Nielsen ratings is, you know, what station is owned by Singapore, what station is owned by, you know, all the and now, of course, you got what iHeartRadio owns, damn near all of them now. But yeah. there, there used to be a lot of separation, you know, like five companies that would just own all the radio stations and a lot of the TV stations throughout the country. But if you didn't know that, you know. But here you go. Yeah, this is perfect. All right, so I mean, I asked, you know, I asked for what are some of the other, you know, brands as well as companies. Now, again, you know, you would need to drill into this a little more and ask it how, you know, what the currency of the data is. If it's 2021, if Kellogg's have done any major divestitures or M and A in activity in the last year or six months, it may not know that, but it gives you a start. See, and then it'll say these are just a few, right? So, um, you know, you always have to ask you know give me all or you know what are oh, wait i'm oh, sorry <laughs> list some more subsidy well, subsidiary it's, it's hard to type when people are watching you it is <laughs> it seems like um what it, now, it's, see the thing the thing just let me add one thing and then we'll go to what the comment you're going to make so the reason why this is this list is over here on the left <clears throat> is there's persistent memory within the chat. So think of it like an email thread or a discussion thread within a message on an iPhone. So you can go back to it and pick it up from there. So instead of you know listing all the stuff, and I can just say, well, list some more, right? Because I'm in that thread based on the original question. Now, I may find out that my original question, just like when you're asking questions of people when you're interviewing and elicitating what's going on and what kind of needs they have, you may have to back up because find out, maybe you, you, you find out something that they're going down a particular path and they're not giving you something else over here, or maybe they haven't even thought of some things and you need to ask more questions. All right, so somebody was about to make a comment, sorry, or, or oh. a question. So perceptions here, I, I'm thinking this is sort of like a Google search on steroids in some ways. Um, and in other ways, I'm thinking, could you use it to say, let's say you're having an elicitation interview with a group of stakeholders, and um, what you want to do is take that transcription and ask it to create a glossary of terms and tell you what everything in there means. So what I'm finding is I'm having to do a lot of searching to find out what some of these inside terms, um, their acronyms and things like that mean. I'm over here going Googling um, certain terms uh, in claims management or whatever it, while I'm listening to people. Um, can you have it um, sort of analyze the, the chat either live or from the transcription 
and produce a glossary of terms? Uh, the, the short answer, yes. So what you would do is feed in the transcript and ask it, say, you know, uh, uh, other than common words, right? What are meta, you know, so what area for you, you've got a UW medicine. So what specific area, for instance, have you done some recent work in? Just an example. Uh, one would be um, risk management. And um, so it would be things like claims, grievances. So we're doing a claims workflow interview and um, we're hearing terms like run loss. I had to go look up run loss, for instance, um, and found out what that meant. Um, so it might be something like show me, sh list the meaning. I don't know how to describe it. List the meaning of all the, go ahead. Uh, so, so that's a, all right, so just hold on a second. Yeah, so the, the point, let me go back to your question about, is this Google on steroids? And the answer is yes and no. Right. So it is it is in a sense, chat GPT, at least because it's been consuming Internet information is like a search engine. The thing is, is that it has the the AI learning and uh, the natural language thing on top. So you can ask it derivative questions like if you ask. If you dumped in, for instance, the transcript in the Google search and said, find all the list, all the terms in here, you couldn't do that, right? You'd have to have some kind of script that pulled out the terms and did it for you. Well, that's what ChatGP can do. It also can produce charts on anything in there. If you got a lot of data, it can do that. It can do data analysis. Thea, what were you going to ask or say? I was going to say, give me the, the 100 most common terms in risk analysis with the specialty of something, you know. Would that work, Jim? Yeah. Well, let's ask for the top 10 to start with. Let's I mean, start so with we 10. just we can sure all time. Sure. Uh, most common uh, risk management terms in medical claims. We'll just start with that, right? Yeah. And, you know, if you didn't see what you like, then you go to an angle. But, you know, to what you said, that that's a very good example of why if you give it specific information you want it to work on, like the transcript. Yes. And then ask, you know, for it to define terms in there. You know, you don't even have to highlight it. You just keep going or try to give it a, a you know, what kind of terms do you want defined as opposed to common terms or whatever, you know, things that are specific to the discussion, the insider baseball terms, if you will. <laughs> can you then, uh, let's say let's say we go on that transcript, can you ask it things like, let's say it's, you've given it War and Peace, um, the, the, the entire text of War and Peace, and what you want to know is for it to tell you about each character in the story and what the character's particular storyline is. So you get a character profile. Could it do that? Yes, it will. It will. You can take something like that and it can re-engineer. Now, it's not going to give you any of the nuances or the human intuitions that form around it, because sometimes if I take a, you know, if I'm a novelist or, you know, I'm taking a story and I may not state everything about that character. Right. There are some things that, you know, as a reader. I'm getting from reading it and I'm forming intuitions or, you know, it's, like, it's not going to get that. But what yeah. it can do is it will tell you, all right, here's how the where how the character enters the story. For instance, you know, where it is in the story arc, you know, the kind of things that happens. And it'll give you a summary of how of that character with regard to the book. So yeah, it can do most of that, but it can't give you all the stuff especially the emotional stuff that might come from the, the author is trying to evoke in the story, because that's a very, that is yeah. one of the limitations. That's a very human thing. In, it's inferred based on human experience. Um, I'm thinking back to business analysis in terms of like the personas that people describe the roles, like a risk manager or a patient or these different actors in our use cases. It would be lovely if it could list all the actors um, in the conversation and define them um, based on what it what people how people have defined them 
for instance. Yes, it can give you a start to that, right? Like I said, there will be limitations because the, the people may be just using the term or describing it, but would not uh, not explicitly uh, including in what they're saying the intent or the extent of their knowledge behind it. But this can certainly give you the start, right? I mean, it's a perfect data mining and summarization as opposed to just giving you dot points. The power of a lot of this is where it does give you the summarization or you know possible ways to, to hook things together. Mike, other than chat GPT, what other types of AI can we go ahead and be using now? Okay, well, let's ask. And <laughs> I'm gonna I'm going to ask, let's see what it says here, because I uh, you know, every day it seems like there's another list on LinkedIn or social media about here, here's a top 100 <laughs> applications to use. Um Oh, oh uh, so before I ask it this question, let me make one note. Have you not, if, if you've used Google or Bing or Brave or any of those lately, have you noticed that it's actually putting summaries on there for you? So let me just give you an example. Let's just do this right quick. Um, uh, well, I'll just, who was, you know, was, which I don't remember how to spell it. Anyway, I'll just put that there. No, that one didn't do it. Well, so what I've been seeing lately, let's just give me another question. Just add, just somebody ask a question. We're doing a search here. When when was the Eiffel Tower built? Let's see if it, okay. Ah, there's a at, here's the summarizer. That is a chat GPT like thing. They may have even have an open AI API attached to this. Bing does this. Google has started with theirs to try and experiment with. But the summarizer, this is, and see, powered by Brave AI. Okay. Now back to this. What apps or AI apps are most useful for business analysts? And we have to assume that this is going to change almost on a daily basis now. Oh, it will. Right. Yeah. And it's giving you old stuff here, by the way. <laughs> yeah. See, these, these are all because this is pretty much pre, you know, most of the, the app development, especially based on the, the, the new uh, learning language engines is all been in the last year or two. So most of chat GPT's knowledge base won't cover it. But we'll do we can I do this. see lists on LinkedIn on almost a daily basis of oh, check, yeah. check your your grammar, check your email, create emails for a mass audience, all kinds of stuff that it's set up to do. Yeah, okay, so we are, you know, I mean, so this is even 2021, right? So this isn't even, you know, this isn't really doing well in the search. So yeah, oh, oh yeah. I mean, and you can find all this kind of stuff. Um, again, it's just like anything else on the internet. You have to kind of filter. Oh, this, this is 2019. So this article right here is even before chat GPT though. It was only on the early stages. There was one that was April 2023 on there. Uh, yeah, but I was going to, like, this is CIO magazine, right? So I was going to, you know, there was other sources, right? Blah, blah, blah. Anyway. We are five yeah, that one I'm afraid to answer because it's, you know, it's, it's like changes every day. We're the chart GPT, I think, is one of the most phenomenal recent ones because if there's anything that anybody in business does, it's, you know, end up creating charts and all kinds of other supporting information. Now, if I could feed in the data set and say produce a chart of this type, 
you know, with these axes, you know, basically specify what you're going to sit there and build. You're on your own. Even if you're a whiz at Excel, it'll still take a little bit, right? But if you can feed the data in and it just pops it right out. We've got some awesome links in the chat. Uh, does anyone have any last questions before we wrap up? Just basically, uh, this this was great. And how do we learn more? What's the best place to go to find out more about how to use this? Uh, so the best thing to use is actually go in and, well, there's different answers to that question, right? So I would say two things. One is find others who are using it you know, people that you know, right? And you know what their skills are, you know, and mine them for information, obviously, you know, community, like community here. The second thing is, is just experiment with it, right? Look at some of those, you know, things, the, you know, people are putting out, in addition to the AI apps, like I said, they're putting out prompt helps, PDFs, you know, all kinds of training on prompts. Well, just treat it like, okay, let's say this is kind of like a weird version of, you know, a uh, data analysis tool or business analysis tool. How do I use it? And just try doing some of those things. And I would do exactly some of those things that you put up as a hypothesis, you know, within reason. You don't want to put confidential data in there, but just say, hey, let me see. I'm working on this. Could chat GPT help me? Well, ask it the question. And then how do, how would I do this using, you know, the chat GPT? Let it tell you how to do it and then try it. Very good. I would like oh, to uh, just by the way, it, it will help though if you're willing to invest twenty dollars a month because this is the GPT four engine. Um, the GPT three point five is free, but you're paying twenty dollars, you get some of the usage caps off of it. See, the, the model here is the default on this one, but if I yeah, anyway, just consider investing a little bit and just play with it and find another app that you think might be interesting and play with it. Okay. Mike, if you don't mind dropping a link to the, the model that you have into our chat so we can reference it. If you do some research, if you find something that's interesting, if you may have some victories, please write a little article for LinkedIn, share your knowledge. You have to assume that you may not be the first one to figure it out, but you may be the first one to put it on LinkedIn. And there are many other people that have not gotten as far as you've gotten. Even if you just have a few comments and have a brief conversation with somebody, you're spreading your knowledge and you lift us all up. So let's make our, our community better by spreading the, the good stuff that we figured out. So if somebody else can maybe get a springboard and do something better. Maybe they'll share it too. Okay, last few minutes. Does anyone have any last questions? Okay, Mike, I want to extend our thanks to you. I uh, called you out of the blue, and I think you thought I was a crazy person, but it's well, like this this is right. I know it's right. So um, also, I'm going to suggest to the IBA that they are able to uh, ask you to come and speak for them. Uh, Cliff, do you have your hand up? No, no, I was clapping. Oh, that's a clap. <laughs> okay, thanks. Okay. So the, um, um, and just, I'll, I just want to end again with what I said. For a business analyst, this is a golden opportunity because it can help get out of the rut of just being a requirements writer, any, all that other head trash and everything else, and really leverage the skills that business analysts should have. So take it that way, experiment with it, and push for it. And I bet you there's going to be some LinkedIn groups on chat AI, on using AI for the average person, things like that. Let's look for those. And well, why don't you start a why don't you start a business analyst AI group? How do we do that? Okay, I'll get that Let's started. Oh yes, yes, Bob. <laughs> hey Cliff, can you um? as well as uploading this video, also upload this week's uh, chat file. Yes, please. Yeah, yeah. That, I was going to say most of the time we don't do that, but uh, this time it'll be important. So it'll yes. Be good. Okay. One note, ladies and gentlemen, earlier in the meeting, I asked for, uh, told you we needed a board member to act as a CFO. 
many of you probably said, oh, I can't do that. I don't live in Florida. You don't have to live in Florida for this. We have figured out we can do banking online. You don't have to be in Florida. So if you're interested in having a very small role, but very critical role in our organization, we just need for you to be responsible for helping us set up the bank account and then renew it on a yearly basis. And then whenever you're not CFO anymore, we'll switch it over to the next person. But that's what we need. Don't eliminate yourself if you don't live in Florida. As you know, I don't live in Florida, but I already have a board member role and they won't let me take two. So somebody step up and help us out, please. We will. We don't want you to. <laughs> anyway, OK, next week we're going to be working on techniques again. And honestly, right now, I don't know which techniques, but we will put that in the uh, meeting announcement whenever Cliff sends that out. But we will be here next week for our 76th meeting and we'll work on techniques out of chapter 10 so that you can pass the, the study, the uh, test for the BABOC, whichever test it is, and you can be, become a better BA. And if anybody has any techniques that they'd like to present that we haven't presented so far in this round, let us know and we'll sign you up. Thank you again, Mike. No, yeah, thanks. This is always fun. We can okay. do more later. All right. Yes. Thank you. Goodbye. Oh, and Thea, if you get the techniques that you want to have for next week, let me know. I'll put it in the announcement. I usually send them out like tomorrow, but whenever you get them, I can always edit I'll the announcement. I'll send you too. some, Cliff. Okay. Perfect. All right, guys. See you later. <laughs>